The name Andy Serkis made me want to watch this. There is another name involved with this movie that made me almost not want to watch this. But at least that person gets shot in the face. SAS, the rise of the black swan, or SAS Red Notice. There's a Netflix movie coming called Red Notice, so I guess Netflix changed the name to Rise of the Black Swan. It fits the context of the movie, it's fine, it doesn't matter. It's done by a guy named Magnus Martins and written by another guy named Lawrence Malkin. And it's based on a novel I haven't read by Andy McNabb. So I like the cast, this is the lead characters, he, Tom Buckingham, he's played by a guy named Sam Hewen? Hugen? I don't know. But he's great. We've got Ruby Rose, Andy Serkis, of course, and Tom Wilkinson makes an appearance, at, mostly at the start. And it's the kind of 24 slash under siege kind of movie. There's not a lot of surprises or things you don't expect in it. You've kind of seen everything in this movie before. But I did like the kind of psychopathic element they kind of had with not just the actual, not just the leading uh, hero, but also the lead villain, which is Ruby Rose. So when Ruby Rose eventually says, "We're not so different, you and I," which she does, I'm like, "All right, that's cliche as fuck, but that is true. That is very true." And I wasn't sure I wanted to review this because of a certain dude that's in this movie. But I decided that if I reviewed it, I'd only make a video of it if he gets shot in the face. I don't know why I was that specific. Just shot in the face. In the face. So I'm watching the movie, I'm having a decent time, it's fine, it's solid, it's passable. And then it happens. He gets shot in the face. There's the only spoiler I'll kind of give you with this movie. He gets shot in the face. And I was like, yep, yeah, all right, cool. I'll do that with you. Uh, him being in it does kind of change the score, but it's not 100% the movie's fault. I also say this, that SAS uh, Red Notice Black Swan Rise Off is a little long. This movie's two hours for what is ostensibly 24 slash under siege diehardish kind of movie with just like British elements rather than the usual American ones. So it, it's not a storyline that's going to change the way you look at movies. It's, you always kind of know where it's going, but it's not that boring getting there. It's, it's fine. It passes the time well enough. It's just another one of those. It's all right. Six out of 10. I like Movies that take elements from 24 and kind of put them in a movie, I like that. So, I'm probably a little more lenient than I, than I almost would. It's competently made, it's fine. Magus Martin's apparently made a lot of TV, not, not, not as much movies and things like that. And some of those TV shows are action, like he's done some Banshee and things like that. So, I, he, it is a competently made movie. I thought it might be just some silly B-grade nonsense, but it seemed to, it seemed to be better than that. It was fine. And it's just fine because it, it's the two-hour thing that gets me. The two-hour thing that definitely gets me because why did this movie need to be two hours if you're telling such a, I don't know, story that's been done a billion times before? Shouldn't that story have been told so many times now that you could probably do it in about 15 minutes? And then you could do the rest of the movie. Hey. Solved. Give me a like, dislike, share and subscribe. It's an alright time. It's a high six. You know, it's a, I'm a little biased because I like some of the genre tropes in it. But if you're not so much a fan of that, it's fine. Just skip it. But... I hate sixes and fives. I hate giving movies sixes and fives. They're the hardest movies to review. Ugh. Give me a like, dislike, share, and subscribe.